to sin is still Christ the Lord. Amen? That is truth. It is like this oil that you put in the water and it comes up. When people discover that, they know that Christianity is not just a religion or a belief system, but it is that relationship with God that sets you free from the bondage of sin. I think that nowadays we don't spend time with the Word of God to discover the truth of God's word. Why? Because we have commercialized or somehow um, the gospel has nowadays been commercialized. I was telling you during the Bible study that the prosperity gospel is so deceptive in this sense. Come to Jesus and you'll be rich. Come to Jesus and you'll feel well. Come to Jesus and it's what you can get. But Jesus says, if you believe in me, you must obey me. If therefore the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Are you free? It's a question. Are you free? Have you been set free? Have you lived your freedom this week? Are you still a slave to anger? Are you still a slave to sexual immorality? Are you still a slave to money? I used it as a slave. You can mention all the things that we tend to enslave ourselves to. Have you been set free by the Son? The Bible says, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Let's go to Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3. find another truth. Galatians 3. O foolish Galatians, Paul writes, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, you are now being made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, therefore, he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. Jesus said, if you are my disciples, you will abide by my word. You will live my word. You will obey my word. You will put into practice my teachings. How? By faith. Nowadays, we also encounter the plurality of faith 
and religions. But Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. I was in a conversation with a man at the Master of Pain Center and we went, we, we, and we, now we entered into a conversation and he says to me, Ahmed, why did you have to change your religion? I said, I didn't change my religion. I believed in Jesus. But it's the same. I said, no, it's not the same. I believe that Jesus died and he rose again for the salvation of those who believe in that fact alone. And he said to me, so you mean to say that if you are not a Christian, you will not go to heaven? And I said, it depends on what you mean by Christian. If you go to church, you mean? Are all who go to church Christians? Are all who go to church Christians? No. I said, if you mean those who reject the death and resurrection of Jesus are not saved, including those who go to church. That is another truth. Like the water, and the oil will separate. And this is what Paul is writing to the Galatian church and saying, look, you were saved by faith. And now you try to continue to live your life by works. And this here you find, ah, I'm a, I'm a good man, I give charity, I, you know, there was this guy, he said to me, Ahmed, I will die and I'll see you in heaven. I said, why do you think that you will die and see me in heaven? He said, because, you know, this week I tried to help many people. And I said, so if you help many people, you die and go to heaven? I know many atheists who do many, many good things. And they'll tell you, I don't believe in a God. Do you buy heaven by what you do? No. And the Galatians trying to do that. And so Paul reminds us another truth. Abraham, the father of faith, the Jews said to Jesus, we are descendants of Abraham. And so Paul brings up the issue of the belief of the Jews and says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. He believed what God has said. He acted on what God has said. And that is faith. Faith without works, the Bible says, is one. It's dead. How can you believe something to be true and not live it? You might fail in living it, but you would admit, yes, I failed, but it is still truth. And verse 7 is so clear. Therefore, Paul writes, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. That those who believe, that those who live, that those who put into practice what they have believed are the sons and promise of God. And the scripture foreseeing, verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations of the world shall be blessed. I like the word here, nations, because it is a translation. In fact, in Greek, the word laos is not a nation, it's the people. So all the peoples of the world. As most of you know, nations are an invention of 19th century Europe. 
God does not think in terms of nations, he thinks in terms of people. All people are precious before the Lord, irrespective of who you are. So